You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. I'm on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with another Let's Play episode of Ed Astra. So, yo, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy as entertain you, and let's jump right in. Alarm, Jan, you are up. And let's get ready for some pain. Oh boy, I'm worried. I already have a feeling he's gonna freaking poison everyone. Alright. At least Virginia and Cassius do. I just cater not touching his food at all, simply watching the rest of us. Cassius lets out a loud cough. Alex sits upon his leg in concern. Sorry, something in my throat. He takes another drink of his wine. Keep your mind and heart open, great ape. You shall receive guidance. My vision flashes and the tension somehow builds, and I know now that something terrible is about to happen. So, Cassius, I hear you have an announcement to make this morning. The entire room freezes as the wolves stop eating and Alex stops serving. I sit there on my knees, trying to keep my breathing even, trying to deal with feeling like I have, like I have voices in my head, and with Kato apparently discovering our plan at the same time. Cassius finally speaks, or tries to. I... He coughs again, harder this time. I... I notice him starting to shake, and Alex again puts a paw on his leg. Cassius? Cassius, what's wrong? Yes, what's wrong, Cassius? Don't you have a speech to give this morning? You might have post postponed it if you have a cough. Cassius suddenly sits up, trembling. He stares at Cato, wide-eyed, disbelieving, one paw moving to his throat. Cassius! He turns to Alex, reaching a paw out to him, which the cat catches. I... I can't breathe! Cassius wheezes, looking down into his goblet, and he suddenly spasms, curling over his stomach before another violent spasm takes him, and he arches out of the, onto the bed, screaming. Oh, man. So dramatic. It's a hideous sound, full of agony. It's so sudden I'm left to just to stare in shock, still on my knees. Virginia stands up, moving around her bed to get closer to Cassius. Meanwhile, Alex screams as well, staring in horror at Cassius. Cass! Cass, what is it? What happened? Cassius just writhes under him, even as Alex tries to hold him down. I notice his mouth foaming, red from the wine, the goblet still held in his paw before he drops it, spilling it onto the bed. Spilling onto the floor. Cass! Alex's voice is filled with despair, probably realizing at the same time I do that Cassius has been poisoned, that he might be dying. Oh dear, are you cramping, Cassius? Perhaps you ate too fast. The hair rises on the back of my neck as I sense Cato sitting behind me. He found out about our plan. He put a stop to it just like that. Cato, this is too far! Was it the wine? I almost don't register what Alex just said, but that's when I feel Cato get up behind me. In a few steps, he's standing over Alex and Cassie's before he swings a paw hard into Alex's face. He sends a small cat flying so far that he's thrown up against the wall. He crumples there, unmoving. Virginia ducks when this happens, but bravely moves forward, grabbing Cassie's and turning him over onto his stomach. For a moment, I think Cato is going to do the same to her, but he seems to get himself under control. Was it the wine, then? Well, who served it? He looks around inquisitively, even while Virginia sticks her fingers into Cassius's mouth, shoving them deep until the screaming wolf lets out a wretch. Cato's eyes settle on me. What did you put in this drink, Simeon? I stay there on my knees, dumbfounded. Then there's a splattering sound as Cassius vomits up his breakfast, tinged red from the wine. Virginia stubbornly continues to gag him, forcing out every little bit she can. Well, I suppose we'll have to investigate, won't we? Come! Send a medical ship from Astra City! Tell them the Emperor has been poisoned! Yes, Virginia. Cato looks down at me, then before I can move, he reaches out and grabs up my arm. I felt the power of a wolf before, main one being Amicus, of course, but this is different. It's like he's made of stone. Cato starts pulling me toward the door, and every step feels like my arm is about to be yanked out of its socket. As Cato marches out into the hallway, I grasp at his arm with my other hand, trying to relieve the pressure somehow. The wolf stares straight ahead, ignoring me even as I try to pull away. I can walk. I grip my teeth, my hand already numb. I look left and right, trying to figure out how I might get away. There's no chance for that, though, as I realize we've reached Amicus's room. Suddenly I find myself on the floor as the wolf throws me violently into the room. I suggest you stay there. You have no means to escape anyway. I'll be back to discuss things with you. There's some strange humor in his voice with that last part, and before I can even look back, the door shuts and I hear another sound. A click. Oh, man. Son of a bitch. He poisoned, he poisoned Cassius. I sit in Amicus's room and tunneled stu in stunned silence for a long, long time. I still haven't been able to comprehend the series of events that, have, uh, that had just unfolded. All I could piece together was that Alex, for whatever reason, had tipped Cato off as to what we were planning. I suppose the cat had, hadn't expected Cato to use such drastic measures, judging by his reaction, but he wanted to put a stop to our plans just the same. I don't bother myself with trying to figure out, out Alex's motives anymore, though. Instead, I love to sit here and wonder if there's anything I can possibly do to get out of this. As soon as I find that clicking sound was the, 
I soon find out that the clicking sound was the door locking. I suppose that means Kato is the acting emperor again, with Cassius either incapacitated or even dead. I ask Kama about Cassius' health, but he only tells me that the information is not available to him. So I wait, sitting on the coach for hours. Couch. Coach. Wondering if the next... Yeah, that's not Coach Devin. Wondering if the next time this door slides open, it will be my death. I need Amicus. The thoughts become too much for me, and I have to get up to walk around, trying hard not to hyperventilate. Maybe Nefra will be able to do something. He must have heard about what happened by now, unless Kato did something to him as well. With a deep breath, I push past the curtain and out onto the balcony. It's already late afternoon, but that's not what catches my attention. Instead, it's the smoke rising over the city, the sun shining behind it all to give it a strange red glow. I stare, wondering what possibly could have happened in the short time between this morning and now. Calm? Yes, Killian. Why is there smoke over at Astra City? There's a pause. Here's what I found. At approximately the 11th hour, Cato proclaimed himself Emperor of Astra shortly after Emperor Cassius was poisoned by a child pet. Cato then dissolved the Triumvirate and assumed absolute control of the Empire. There are destructive riots in all seven major cities. Is Cassius alive? That information is not available to me, Killian. I sigh and stare down at the water, feeling sick. I wonder how much of this is my fault, at least a little bit, if not all of it, for just being here in the first place. And now Kato's framing me. I'm going to die! My vision blurs with tears before one drops down onto the sloshing lake below me. But then I remember. I deleted my profile from Com's database. I try to remember what I was told about how exactly it works, something to do with the AI security system. I might be able to deduce what room I'm in based on my voice. He should be blind to my exact location. That would mean leaving the boundaries of the palace shouldn't alert anything. Maybe if I... I experimentally stick an arm over the railing, then a leg before I know it. I'm, before I know it, I'm on the other side of the balcony, the lake sloshing below me. I think about what I can do. I could swim for the shore, I could run for an Astra City, and maybe find someone to help me. Maybe one of those contacts that Nefru and Virginia keep talking about. I could also just hide somewhere, maybe even on the island until things settle down a bit. Running into a city in chaos probably wouldn't be the best move. But I already know what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave the palace. I'm not going to leave the palace. I'm going to find a way back in. I need to get to Amicus. I need to tell him what happened and try to figure out a way to fall back our, on our last resort. My stomach twists at the idea, but I know that we're out of choices now. With that, I look down at the water and let go. I plunge into the water with a splash, the cold taking my breath away in an instant. Immediately, I realize the mistake of jumping into the lake with a heavy robe. I'm able to kick out of, out of the loose-fitting garment within a few seconds, though, and I start swimming around the edge of the balcony toward the shore. It's not that far. I start to worry as I feel my arms and legs burn from the strain, and even though the beach is right in front of me, it seems to take longer than it should for my feet to touch the ground. Just as I feel my limbs start to give out, I feel the sandy bottom of the lake against my shoes. I gasp with relief, struggling through the deeper end of the shallows before stumbling to my hands and knees, forcing myself to move forward until I reach the beach. Even now, in this moment of desperation, I have to lay out in the sand for a moment, gasping for breath as I feel my numbed limbs come slowly back to life. I suppose all the anxiety and no food all day had left me feeling weak. I finally realize how exposed I am out here, how easy it would be for someone to see me through the guard from the gardens, or even from the windows of the palace. Alright y'all, let me take some, let me take a little coffee break. Oh, good cup of joe, good cup of joe. With a grunt, I force myself to roll over and start crawling for the tree line in the garden so I, that I can at least have some cover. As I crouch there in just my underwear, I'm still trying to catch my breath, I realize how quiet it is out here. Again, it's a striking contrast to how violently things had changed just hours ago. Finally, after a deep breath, I start pushing my way through the gardens, walking through the foliage rather than using the paths. I doubt anyone's taking a garden stroll considering what's happened, but the one thing I've learned is that no one's predictable here. So I try to keep hidden, using the large exotic-looking plants as cover before leaping across paths and ducking into the plant life again. As I get closer to the palace, I try to think about how I'm going to do this. With any luck, no one's actually in the palace. It would make sense after what happened. If anyone is in the palace, I just have to hope they aren't Kato. There's also the problem of actually getting Amicus out of the dungeons. While I might be blind to calm, Amicus definitely isn't. I guess I need to get to Neferu. He would definitely know about what's happened now. What's happened by now. Maybe we could come up with a plan if he doesn't have one already. He always seems to know what to do. Well, usually. I just have to hope that something hasn't happened to him. So as I come up to the palace entrance, I look around. The quiet staring... To the quiet starting to become unnerving. I don't see anyone, so swallowing hard, I jog through the entrance of the palace. The cool air of the hallways hits my damp skin and makes me shiver, both from the cold and the tension. 
I'm sure to keep close to the walls, always looking ahead to the doorway or pillar that I can duck behind in case I see someone. Luckily, that doesn't happen, and I'm more and more convinced that no one is actually here. Before I know it, I'm coming up on the hall that holds Nefru's room. My breathing quickens as I get closer to the door, knowing that I'll feel a lot better if I can just have some guidance. I've been here for a while, and I've gotten used to the way, the way of things, but I'm completely out of my element now. I make it to the door and reach out, pressing the panel to slide it open. The room is empty. I stare for a moment, as if doing that will make the jackal magically appear back in his bed where I last saw him. Then I see something on the floor. A green charger of shattered glass. Wine bottles knocked from the tables to the floor. An ominous feeling starts to blossom in my chest as I note the purplish-red stains amongst the glass. The spilled wine dried from how long it's been there. I swallow again to wet my throat, looking to the ceiling, about to call out to Calm and ask for Nefer's location before stopping myself. I don't know if actually alerting Calm to my location is a good idea. I'm pretty sure the security portion of the AIs is separate from the rest of Calm, but I don't want to chance it. I stand there for a moment, unsure of what to do now. I could go around the palace looking for the Jackal. He could be anywhere, really. Seeing the glass, knowing what's happened, I'm just denying what's obvious here. I just have to hope that he's okay wherever he's been taken. I lean against the frame of the door for a moment, trying to think of what to do next. I could look for Virginia, but I have no idea where her room might be. Besides, if the state of Nefru's room is anything to go by, I wouldn't be surprised if she's been taken somewhere against her will as well. Kato probably knows everything about what we're planning. There's really no other choice but to go into the dungeons, tell Amicus about what's happened, and then maybe he'll know what to do. Just as I'm turning to go back out into the hall, though, I hear footsteps. I quickly draw back into the room, reaching up to the panel to shut the door to door again. Before I do, though, I hear something else. The sound of muttering in a very familiar voice. I linger just inside the room, listening as the voice draws closer. Oh dear, oh dear, oh Galen, this is too much, too much! I grit my teeth, listening as the cat comes closer, sounding like he's alone. I suddenly make up my mind as to what's going going to do next. I'm going to be killed! I'm going to be killed! What was I thinking? At that moment, the cat passes the doorway. He's got his paws up to the side of his face, too busy staring at the ground to even notice me. He's close enough that all I have to do is reach out and grab him by the straps of his robe before yanking him into the room as hard as I can. Immediately, the cat shrieks, the sound bending comically with the forces of my tug. I swing him around toward the middle of the room before turning around to quickly shut the door. Alex is still yelling as he tumbles to the ground, rolling several times before coming to a stop next to the shattered bottles. He curls up there, covering his face as he cowers on the ground. Wait, wait, I'm sorry for whatever it was it is that I did. The cat continues to grovel before finally peeking through his paws to look up at me. He goes quiet, though he remains fetal, as if deciding if he should be still be scared or not. Suddenly he seems to make up his mind and quickly stands, brushing off imaginary dust as he fixes his face into one of bland disinterest. Oh, Killian, I thought you might be someone else. My apologies. A glare. What reason did you have for grabbing me so roughly? No, no more bullshitting from you. What the hell's going on? The cat finally stops fidgeting and faces me, though he doesn't make eye contact, staring at the door behind me instead. Well, I'm sure you already know that, don't you? I'm surprised Kato let you out, to be honest. Something about Alex's demeanor, not only the way he's acting now, but the way he's been acting for the past month, gets to me, to, gets to me that moment. I step forward suddenly, and though I want to hit him, I settle with just giving him a hard shove in the chest that sends him stumbling back with a noisy slapping of his sandals on the stone floor. What the fuck, Alex? He windmills his arms, trying to catch his balance, and when he finally does, he brings his paws up to his chest, his ears pinned back, and his claws unsheathed. I don't know if Alex is any good at fighting, but I'd rather not get raked by those things, so I hold off on giving him another shove. Besides, he's looking scared again, staring at me wide-eyed. Don't touch me! I grip my teeth, forcing myself not to do it again. Then tell me what it is that you're doing! Why did you do this? What? This time I step forward and raise my fist threateningly, and immediately the cat covers his face, cowering. I realize that Alex probably doesn't have any fighting skills at all. That he might actually be a coward rather than just pretending to be one. This realization cools my desire to really hurt the cat. Instead, I just wait again until Alex lowers his paw, looking at me with fear. I guess that's a good thing. Amicus had told me in the past that the few sapient primates in the galaxy are really, n are really only known for a few things. One being that they can't swim, and the other being their incredible strength. I suppose it's a good reputation to have, even if it's not true for humans, but Alex wouldn't know that. I take another threatening step forward. Tell me! All right! I'm surprised by the cat's sudden exclamation. His eyes screwed shut as he raises his paws to his head for tugging at it in distress. I'll tell you whatever it is you want if you just leave me alone. I'm tired of this goddamn palace and psychopathic wolves and half-developed children. I ignore that jab at me, staring at the cat, waiting. I'll probably be deported soon anyway, if not executed. The cat's voice catches in his throat, and he raises a paw to his mouth, seemingly about to cry again. He really is scared, and that gives me an idea. Listen, I'm trying to help Amicus to his rightful place on the throne. Maybe if you help me out and Amicus does become Emperor, I can work something out for you. You know how close the two of us are. I wait as he tries to gather himself, clasping his paws, his claws together before simply looking at the ground. 
He doesn't say anything, though, so I sigh. Why did you tell Kato about our plan? Alex echoes my sigh, looking away to the, off to the side. Hey, there's a lot of Galaxy's politics that you wouldn't understand, Killian. Well, simplify it for me, then. I might be half-developed, but I think I'm starting to get the hang of how things work around here. And if I tell you, you'll help me leave this cursed moon? I grip my teeth. Yes. Alex side-eyes me before shaking his head. It was... I became a pet for a single reason. Not for ambassadorial or adastra amorpha relations, not even to gather intelligence. I mean, originally that was my purpose, but I became close to Cassius over the course of several official meetings and dinners. My department took notice and altered my assignment. The cat goes quiet again. All right, then what are you here for now? Alex takes a deep breath and looks me in the eye. Chaos. I wait, but that's all the cat says. I frown at him. You're, you're here to create chaos? Alex's voice suddenly becomes monotonous. An unstable government creates an unstable society. Progress is stalled, and outward endeavors turn inward. The society worries less about what is happening outside their borders while becoming more concerned with their own issues. It's like he's reciting something he's heard many times before. Thinking about it, the explanation seems to have some reason to it. Alex's seemingly senseless decisions, shifting alliances, and general odd behavior could be explained by this. He's only here to make things more difficult for the wolves to integrate back into the Galaxias, prevent them from progressing out of the technological and economic slump they're currently in. He's not just against me, Amicus, Cassius, Irving, Cato, but either all of us at once. I think about the billowing smoke over at Astra City. It's probably happening to dozens of cities right now. I suddenly feel an overwhelming feeling of disgust for the cat in front of me. Alright, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks for a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!